Welcome to this video where I'm going to be showing you exactly how to use the Celestron travel scope. Now I have a Celestron travel scope 80 in front of me but if you have a travel scope 70 or even a 50 you should still be able to follow along with this tutorial. Now as you see I've already set up this telescope ahead of time but if you do need to do that first I suggest you watch the other videos on my channel. I've got one for the Travelscope 70 and I've also got one for this Travelscope 80. So as I say I'll leave a link to those in the description below if you do want to watch those. Now on to using this telescope. The first thing you're going to need to do is adjust the tripod so that, that it is at a height that is suitable for you. So what you can do here is you can unlock these knobs and extend these out as far as they go or shorter if you wanted to. Now just make sure that each leg is the same length or otherwise you're going to have stability issues. Now you'll see that this is actually still too short for me. So what we can do here is we can adjust the height further by using this here. So what you need to do is just basically turn that counterclockwise and you'll see that that's going up there, up here. And I'm going to get this to a suitable height for me. So it's a comfortable height so I'm not bending over too much to look through the eyepiece. And that looks about right for me. So let's move this here. Now, on to actually using or moving the telescope, I should say. The travel scope operates on a manual alt azimut mount. Or in other words, if you can imagine it this way, it's a point and shoot. So you can dictate exactly where you want it to look by moving a couple of different levers, which I'm now going to show you. The first to be aware of is the pan handle. That is this. So again, counterclockwise to release it and that will enable you to move the telescope on, I need to do that one more time, I'll move it back into the middle, I need to do the move, um, a little bit less, a little bit more I should say, and just move that like this and then once you're happy with that position you can lock it in place, I'm just going to put it back into the centre, so you lock it back in place by going clockwise. Now the other knob to be aware of, the tension knob, is this one, hopefully you can see that. So I'm going to, un again counterclockwise, unscrew this and that enables me to tilt this back like that and point towards the sky. So now we have that in place. So yeah, if we need to make any adjustments from here, it's the pan handle and it's this one here. Okay, the, the tension knob. So it's really important to be aware of those. Now we need to align our finder scope. In order to use your finder scope, which is here, you need to ensure it is pointing in the same direction as your main telescope. So what you need to do to do this it's recommended to do it during the day, it's much easier. Take your telescope outside, remove the lens cap, and locate a distant daytime object. It could be a signpost, a light pole, radio antenna, or even something like a chimney. So let's just say I'm gonna choose this chimney up here. There's a chimney behind that tree here. You just need to make sure that that object for you is at least a quarter of a mile away. But if it isn't possible, just use something that is as far away as, as, as you can. Next, you want to center this object in the main telescope using a low power or the 20 millimeter eyepiece in the main telescope. So here I've got my erect diagonal in there and then I've put the 20 mil, you'll hopefully see that, the 20 mil in here. So make sure they're all in. And now I need to basically look through here and be able to see that chimney. Then what you want to do is you want to look through the eyepiece of the finder scope. So you'd be taking this off and you'd be looking through here and take notice of the position of the same object. You know, is it close, is it far away, whatever. Without moving the main telescope, you need to turn the adjustment thumb screws located around, so you'll see there's three. So adjust these until the crosshairs of the finer scope, when you look through here, you'll see some crosshairs, until those crosshairs um, essentially are centered on the object that you've chosen to shoot with through the main telescope. So again, so basically through the crosshairs I'd want to see this chimney. That will ensure that after that process your finer scope and telescope will be aligned. Then it's back to aiming the telescope. So you've aligned, you just need to aim your telescope by grabbing the pan handle and the knob as previously walked you as I have previously walked you through. Now look through your finer scope until the crosshairs are on the target you want to view. So let's just say you're going for the moon. You'd be basically moving these, trying to find the moon in the sky, and then you'd be looking through the finder scope at the moon. Okay. Now look through your low power eyepiece, so again the 20mm, 
in the main telescope and that target should be visible. So you should be able to see the moon because you've aligned these. To zoom in on the target, let's just say the moon, you can change to the 10 millimeter eyepiece and then just refocus the telescope using the focus knobs as needed. One thing I want to say here is that objects viewed through a finder scope are upside down and backwards, which is normal. Now remember we have an erect image diagonal in here which will prevent that from when you look through the eyepiece and through the main telescope, but that doesn't have that, so that will it will be upside down, okay? Just bear that in mind. The next thing you need to just be aware of is focusing. So these are the focus knobs here. So it's very, very simple. You just turn these um, while looking through the eyepiece until that object, so let's just say the moon, is as crisp as possible. Now if you do wear glasses, you may want to remove them when observing with an eyepiece attached to the telescope, or otherwise it can be a bit uncomfortable. And one other thing to be aware of is you will need to refocus the telescope each time you change eyepieces. So let's say you go from the 20 to a 10 or a 10 to a 20 or view targets at different distances. And that is essentially how you use a Celestron travel scope. I hope this video is useful. If you have any questions, drop them down below. And with that said, over to you and all of the best with your travel scope.